Hi Iggy, how are you doing? I'm kind of losing my voice, but I'm good. <laughs> okay, you're actually in Berlin right now, but you're from Australia. Yep. Uh, but you came to America, to Miami, when you were 16, which is really, really young, yeah. uh, to make it as a rapper. Um, like, how, what was that like? Did, did anybody try to stop you, or did you have any doubts back then, like that you're gonna make it, or that you're gonna make it? I think when you're a kid, you feel so invincible that things don't seem like such a big deal until you look back in retrospect or I see my friends have younger brothers and sisters that are 15 and 16 and I see how young they really are and I think, oh God, were you really over here by yourself, you crazy girl? But at the time, you still really are a, a kid and it doesn't seem so hard or like such a big deal. It seems like a crazy adventure. So while I was doing it, it didn't seem so hard or so crazy or so insane. But looking back, I think you were lucky, <laughs> you know? I mean, how did you make it? Did you have any contacts in Miami already or? Um, sort of, not musically, but I had a friend in Australia and she wanted to be a singer. And we used to make music together at her house. and. Her family actually lived in Miami, and that was the only person I know who knew anybody in America. So I thought, if I'm going to go somewhere, I'll go there. And they had an engineering school in the city, and I thought, maybe I would like to be a musical engineer and learn how to be able to record myself and make my own music. That didn't end up happening because it's so expensive to go to college in these schools out there that I didn't go, but that's why I picked Miami originally. Okay, so now you're signed to like Grand Hustle, which is TI's label. How did you get in touch with TI then? Uh, he actually got in touch with me and um, he called me up and said that he'd heard my music and he really liked it and wanted to meet me and I came in the studio with him the night after the Grammys uh, this year and um, we talked and I met Tiny, his wife and his kids and everybody and I just really liked him. He's become a really good friend of mine and I kind of always go off the vibe of things and it just felt like the right, the right fit for me in the right place and he's from Atlanta and I spent a lot of time living in Atlanta and I understood who he was, the person that he was and so that's why I decided to choose him to work with. Okay, cool. And he's also like kind of the executive producer of your new album, the new classic, uh, kind of. I, well, he's actually not anymore. <laughs> So who is he was going to be, he was going to be, but originally when I was making the new classic, it, all of the records that I had on Glory were supposed to be for the new classic. And he executive produced what ended up being Glory. But as I was making it, I felt like this isn't the new classic. This is something else. It's not the right sound. Not that it sounded bad, but it wasn't what the what the new classic is in my head and he executive produced that and that went good it was an experience but after he said and I said it's better if I just make my own music away because sometimes being around him it influences the music I make to be a bit too much of a different sound and so for that reason he's not going okay. to be but not because I don't love him okay. because I love him <laughs> But yeah. So who did you work with then? Um, my album. Yeah. I only just started working on it like probably about two weeks ago. My DJ from tonight, First Down, um, makes a lot of the beats with me and we record a lot on the road. I'm working heavily with Diplo. I'm going to go back and do a collaboration with Steve Aoki for the record. Uh, Flostradamus will get on there too. And just a lot of the different like EDC producers that are really mixing that with hip hop sound and that's the what I'd like my album to sound like. Okay, like you, you had this mixture in the past because you've also like already worked with Steve Aoki in the yeah. past and uh, with Diplo, like who are known for the more electronic sound, but you also work with kind of like pers people like Juicy J on your yeah. last mixtape, like so you kind of feel the, this diversity on your new album as well. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, being from Australia, I still grew up having a lot of dance music and having dance music festivals be like a big part of my culture growing up and where I'm from, we have one of the biggest festivals in my town and I never really got into that because I was, I loved rap so much and when you're an uber fan of something, it's like, no, I like 
rap music. If you don't like rap music, I don't like you. I don't want to listen to any other kind of music. And now as I get older, I want to listen to rock music and I want to listen to reggae music and I like dance music and I always for some reason thought, mm -mm, electronic music, it has this stigma in hip hop where it's shunned upon or Florida, mm -mm, don't make this music, it's soft. And when I came to Europe and I met Flostradamus or I met Diplo and Steve Oki, I saw that dance music can be grimy and it can be hard and it can have this aggression and this power that I didn't hear on the radio. And it made me really interested in it and it made me go back and look at the culture of where I'm from growing up and thinking this actually has a lot more to do with me. And I, of course, I'm always a fan of hip hop, so I like to incorporate both for that reason. Okay, cool. So when you grow up, you exclusively listen to rap music? or Yeah. <laughs> okay. You know, when sometimes you just love something so much, you think it's like almost like a religion. And I loved Tupac so much. I even bought a Jay-Z album, The Blueprint, and he was like, fuck Jay-Z. And I was like, oh, fuck The Blueprint. I won't listen to The Blueprint. No Blueprint. And I didn't listen to it until I was about 16. And I was like, you know what? He's passed away. It's just music. I'm sure he wouldn't mind if you liked Jay-Z too, but... I was just so mm, dead set on liking that one thing that I felt like it was wrong to like something different. So you kind of explored the East Coast a little bit later or? Um, I don't know, I suppose so, yeah. I really like like Dead Prez or people, East Coast rappers like that, but I never really looked in my booklet like East Coast, Miami rappers, down South. I just like a mix of everything. And I think with energy, I like. Like Tupac was like one of the most important rappers to you and it is still a main influence, you say? Or? Yeah, I love Tupac and I love rappers that are like almost caricatures or characters. I like Method Man and Red Man. I like Missy Elliott, Busta Rhymes. I like rappers that are larger than life, like a character, somebody I could dress up as for Halloween. That's what I like. I don't like rappers that I feel like If I could be you or see them kind of walking down the street, it makes me less interested. I like the fantasy of it, kind of. So, yeah. Okay. Um, Jimmy Iovine once called you with the new Tupac. Um, is that flattering or do you feel it's kind of inappropriate? Um, I think when he said that, it kind of got taken out of context. And I think in the context that he meant it, it was flattering. He said it to me at a basketball game and what he meant was that Tupac had this, we were talking about how much I loved him. And like I was saying before, that I, I was so dead set on doing everything that he said. And he was talking about Tupac's legacy of fans and he said, you know, you could be like the female Tupac with your legacy of fans and the power that you have to make people listen to what you say. And I think people took that out of context and thought they meant like, you're the girl Tupac, but it wasn't in that context. So in the way that he said it, it was flattering to me. Okay. But you're actually kind of unique because you're the first woman ever to be in the XXL, XXL freshman cover. I I'm, still ex I'm still happy about that because I'll always be the first. <laughs> yeah, I was like mainly working with male colleagues and not have a lot of women around. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. <laughs> sometimes it's really cool because sometimes you meet them and the guys can be really nice and you make some friends and sometimes they sort of treat you like mm -hmm. you're less and I won't say any names but some people on the XXL freshman cover of my friends for life and I see them whenever I'm in the city and we record songs together and built friendships and other people that were on the cover one of them was like yo Ma can you get me a plate to eat and I was like I'm on the same cover as you <laughs> excuse me I don't work here no I'm not getting you a plate of food I'm at your girlfriend some are assholes and some end up being friends so it's different you never know You think it would be easier if there were a lot more women who would rap? Um, I don't know. It would be harder, if, and then you'd have to compete more. <laughs> I think it. I don't think it starts with rap. I think it starts with the stigma in just 
our culture of women and being able to be aggressive or powerful. And of course, music does influence that culture. So you have to still have these artists and figures that can influence that, but it's still always going to be social media as a whole and having more female artists would help change it, but it's other outlets as well that have to glorify the girls. Yeah. Like you always said you wanted to work with Missy Elliott, actually. Did that work out yet? Uh, not yet, because she likes, she doesn't send records back and forth on email, but I love Missy. Anytime I put a project out, she always tweets me and says, I see you, and congratulates me, and hopefully I will before the album's wrapped up, get to work with her. She's my favorite. <laughs> Hopefully, but you don't have a release date yet, do I? No, it'll be out in summer and I'll put my single out in February, but I don't want to put a date out because I'm always late for everything. <laughs> okay, hope it's going to be out soon. No, it will. It's definitely out in summer. I have people on the phone to me tonight like, Iggy, get in the studio. You're not allowed to leave London until you have your single. So it's pretty serious right now, so it'll be done. <laughs> okay, you got any last words for the fans? Um, thank you for coming to my tour and making it wonderful to everybody in Europe that came out and supported me. I had an amazing time. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.